Well, guys, I've completed my encampment. We didn't have any major problems. Things went smooth as silk. I appreciate your patience through all the reruns, and this is the last of them. We're going to finish up the dumpster fire that is Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Clues. I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research, and I still wouldn't look at this one without embarrassment. But every time I glanced at it, there was something unresolved. Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I'm excited about this episode. This is episode 14 of Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues in my review. It is the very last one. I'm done after this one. Today, we're going to listen to Mark explain to us how simply putting on a white coat allows people to lie to the community. They can make any statement that they want without having any backing or proof, and people will just eat it up with a spoon. Kind of sounds like Eric Dubay, doesn't it? Flat Earth Clues 14. The Coat of Credibility. For most of us, getting dressed means just putting on something that gets us through the day. For others, it's projecting forward a subtle, or not subtle, reflection of our personality. But for some, it's uniform, a garment that displays literally their position in society. We see them all the time. Firemen, law enforcement, school teacher. And the clothes over time reinforce the ideas of that position or career, similar to the bell of Pavlov's dog. We see the uniform and the idea behind the institution is imprinted onto the wearer. Without knowing anything about the person, we see bravery, protection, educational excellence, and there are many variations of these types. You know, Mark, I'm kind of with you on this one. Many times uniforms will identify you as part of a particular group. That's one of the reasons they call them uniforms. However, for many groups, the uniform is a very functional garment. Police officers, for example, uh, incorporate a ballistic vest into their uniform, plus they carry equipment on their belts, etc. Firefighters wear protective gear, bunkers. The construction worker has his hard hat and his tool belt, and the nurse has her scrubs. You know, another purpose of uniforms is to make the person highly visible. Uh, aircraft marshalers, for example, wear reflective coats. So do the people that tell you to slow down or stop in construction zones on the highway. When I was in the Army, and especially as a paramedic on the streets of Lansing, I wore a distinctive uniform to identify myself as a paramedic. This clearly identified me to the first responders and the patients, especially in mass casualties. One uniform is, however, unique and is the focus of this clue. It is the lab coat, or what I like to call the coat of credibility. The coat of credibility is by all accounts nothing special. It's normally white, but sometimes can be a light shade of blue, about 40 inches long, may or may not have pockets, and really serves no functional purpose. You know, just a little expansion. The length of the lab coat is important too. These short lab coats are worn by medical students. I'm an attending, I wear a 40-inch lab coat, and as a resident, my lab coat was intermittent between the two. It's a good way to identify at a glance the level of training and responsibility, especially in large teaching hospitals. It can't protect you from fire, has no tactical value, and doesn't have any built-in accessories to help you in a lab. It does have a special ability that until now you may not have noticed. It makes people smarter. No, Mark, years of study make you smarter. I don't even wear a lab coat now. I don't really need to. The purpose of the lab coat was to A, keep stuff off your clothes, and B, carry around books. I don't carry around books anymore, and I'm not in a position that I'm getting stuff on my clothes. Hate to tell you this, dude. I don't even wear a tie most of the time. But I don't think anybody has any questions about my intelligence or my ability in my chosen field. Well, maybe not literally more intelligent, 
you're not going to understand calculus by just putting on the coat, but people around you will subliminally pick up on the visual cue. This is because the media over the years has reinforced the idea through television and movies. Time and time again, when you want to portray someone on screen as very intelligent, you have to put them in a lab setting. Well, these guys don't wear lab coats, and I seem to recall they were pretty smart. Am I sensing a little bit of lab coat envy from you there, Mark? But I will grant you that a lot of people that do wear lab coats are in positions and jobs that require them to be smart and have training. And that's what we see. Geeky lab assistant. Evil genius. Scientist on the verge of a breakthrough. Young genius. Older genius. They all wear the coat. And the coat can also function as a symbol for general higher education, even if it's not test tubes and electrodes. Doctors often wear the same type of coat to reflect their extra years of graduate work. No, Mark, and you can trust me on this one. We wear the coat for other reasons. And you say all these people have earned the right to wear the coat. They've had the schooling and deserve to wear the uniform. 16 years of higher education after high school. Yep. And the actors, of course, get a pass because they are portraying a highly intelligent person who has absorbed all the university material. But wait, that's where things can go too far. Because where do we draw the line between actor and academic? Did I mention the 16 years? You understand the coat comes with the 16 years. The 16 years doesn't come with the coat. Take this guy, for example. Some of you know him, and some do not. He received a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and then ditched it immediately to become an actor. Except that's not really true, is it, Mark? Bill Nye graduated as a mechanical engineer from Cornell University. He worked for Boeing for 11 years in aerospace engineering. He actually holds at least one patent that I'm aware of as well. Now, as a side note, my grandfather had a bachelor from Cornell in civil engineering. My father had a bachelor in mechanical engineering from the University of Michigan. And my brother has a bachelor in nuclear maritime engineering from the Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, New York. They're the smart ones in the family. By the way, Mark, what's your engineering degree in? What is your degree in? I'm guessing it's probably theater or marketing because you don't seem to have much training in the sciences. You know, as a side note, my father, who was a talented mechanical engineer, actually got out of engineering when the Apollo program wound down and went into finance. So there's nothing at all wrong with changing careers. The acting career was slow going until he put on the coat and started talking to kids about science. Keep in mind, he is not a licensed educator or a scientist of any kind. He just played one on TV. Cornell, engineering. You know, Chief, my degree, or at least my undergraduate degree, was in biology. Does that mean that I didn't take physics or chemistry or biochemistry or genetics or art appreciation for that matter? You think maybe I might qualify as having some science background, maybe having done an experiment or two before? But then something strange happened. Some of the media who remembered him from their childhood brought him on to answer light science questions. And because he was an actor, it played well. So he was brought on again and again. People started believing, at least subliminally, he was a scientist. Here he is at NASA, and an interview on climate change, and talking politics, and a march for science, and... Uh, you're killing me, Bill. Killing me. Cornell train engineer, patents, history in the aerospace industry. You don't think that his resume qualifies him to talk about science? How's your resume, Mark? Would any of this have happened without the coat? Not a chance. It was the coat that gave him credibility when there was none, and turned a small-time actor into one of the ranking faces of science. No published papers, no graduate work, just the coat. 
and a degree in mechanical engineering from Cornell, patents, 10 years in the aerospace industry, etc., etc., etc. The white coat, symbolizing an elite intellect, separating the men of science from how they see the rest of us. They are above reproach. We are not. They engage in raising the bar of civilization while we engage in other things. The white coat protects them, transforms them, regardless of who they are. Man, woman, black, white, oompa loompa. Everyone who puts on the coat immediately becomes more credible. Well, folks, do you think it's Mark or me wearing the white coat tonight? Do you have any way of knowing if either of us are wearing a white coat right now? Now, was it a white coat or the comments and analysis that established credibility in this series? Judging from the comments on the first few, I think people have formed rather strong opinions on credibility. See this guy here? He sells water products for a living. He's also a Flat Earth member and was at a large meetup in Los Angeles. He put on the coat, held a clipboard, spoke with confidence, and at one point held a captive audience, including me. Was it his stylish good looks? Was it his message? Was it the hat? You decide. Bravery, protection, intelligence. What's the difference between the three? You can't pretend to be a fireman or a cop. You can, however, use the coat to convince people of just about anything regarding science, including the shape of the world itself. No, Mark, that was literally centuries of research and field work that did that. Not to mention, we have pictures. People say that it's been proven for hundreds or even thousands of years that the Earth is a globe. Proven by whom? The men in the white coats? They didn't prove anything. They told you it was a globe, and you bought it, because we believe the world that is presented to us. So if you see me wearing a white lab coat from time to time, understand why. Because you're a shameless poser with delusions of grandeur? It's to make a point that not everything is what it first appears to be, and clothes do not always make it the man. You know, here's the problem. For centuries, people have studied and researched and done field work and made sacrifices, sometimes even the ultimate sacrifice, to advance our knowledge of science. To have somebody come out and say simply putting on a white coat allows you to just spout nonsense to people off the top of your head is just patently absurd. I'm actually glad that this is the last episode of this that I have to review. I honestly feel I lost some IQ points having to listen to all 14 episodes. Well, guys, I want to thank you all for putting up with the reruns this last week. I did remaster them and cleaned up the sound as best I could. We had some problems with the outros, but I didn't have access to my recording studio to fix them. So, it's time to move on to new and different things. We're going to have a week's worth of new videos for you, and I hope that you enjoy it. This is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you reach down there and hit that little like and subscribe. Maybe even hit my Twitter channel. So, we'll see you again soon.